we turn back time and actually get into the hidden side of American history, few figures stand as tall and as inspiring as Sacagawea, a name that resonates with courage, resilience, and the spirit of adventure. Her life, intricately woven into the tapestry of the American West, remains a captivating tale of triumph over adversity and the unbreakable bonds that connect humanity across cultures and time. Sakakawea, born into the Shoshone tribe in what is now Idaho around 1788, emerged from a childhood marked by the tranquility of tribal life. Yet, her journey took a dramatic turn when, at a tender age, she became a victim of abduction and enslavement. It was a harrowing beginning for a young girl who would go on to become one of the most iconic features of the early 19th century. The intrigue of Sakakawea's life story lies not only in her indomitable spirit, but also in the pivotal role she played in the Lewis and Clark expedition, an epic exploration of the uncharted American West. As we deep dive into the untold aspects of her history, we find ourselves asking questions that resonate through the corridors of history. What drove this young Shoshonen woman to venture into the unknown alongside a team of intrepid explorers? What hardships did she endure during her captivity and her time with the expedition? How did she become a symbol of hope and unity in a world fraught with challenges? In the vast expanse of what would become the United States in the late 18th century, the young Shoshone girl named Sakakawea came into this world. Her birth year is estimated to be around 1788, but her life would soon take a tragic turn that would leave an indelible mark on American history. Sakakawea was born into the Shoshone tribe, a native people who roamed the rugged terrain of what is now Idaho. The land was her playground, and the vast wilderness her classroom. But her carefree childhood would be short-lived. At the tender age of 11 or 12, tragedy struck. Sakakawea, along with her family and fellow tribespeople, was in a Shoshone hunting camp near Three Forks, Montana. In an abrupt and brutal turn of events, their peaceful existence was shattered when a group of Hitatsa, a Suyan tribe, descended upon them in a deadly raid. In the chaos and bloodshed that followed, four Shoshonen men, four Shoshonen women, and several boys were mercilessly killed. Among the survivors was young Sakakawea, now orphaned and scarred by the horrors of that fateful day. The Hidatsa, conquerors of the Shoshone camp, had more in store for Sakakawea than just sparing her life. They took her captive, forcibly separating her from her people and her homeland. Her life took a dark and tragic turn as she became a victim of enslavement at the hands of her captors. Imagine the unimaginable for a moment. A child of 11 or 12, her world forever altered, forced to march along her captors as they journeyed 500 miles from Montana to North Dakota. She endured this grueling journey, a stark contrast to her once carefree days in the Shoshone camp. As if her life couldn't get any worse, one fateful day, a French trapper made his way into the Hidatsa village where Sakakawea was held against her will. This enigmatic figure, a stranger to the Native American world that surrounded him, arrived as if by fate. His presence would change the course of Sakakawea's life in ways she could scarcely have imagined. The circumstances of his arrival were as peculiar as they were cruel. The French trapper engaged the Hidatsa in a gambling game, a wager that would determine the fate of young Sakakawea. It was a game of chance that would shape her destiny, and fortune favored the trapper. In an unthinkable exchange, the Hidatsa, driven by their debt, gave away Sakakawea to the French trapper. At this point in her tragic journey, Sakakawea was around 12 or 13 years old, a child who had already endured unimaginable hardship. Now, she was thrust into the hands of a man who would become her captor, a man who would further entrench the nightmare of her enslavement. With her transfer to the French trapper, Sakakawea's life took an even darker turn. She had already experienced the trauma of being torn from her family and the brutality of being taken captive by the Hidatsa. Now, she was ensnared in a web of exploitation that defied comprehension. The French trapper had already acquired another Shoshone captive girl, known as Otter Woman, from the Hidatsa. He referred to both of these young girls as his wives. However, the stark reality was far more sinister. This so-called marriage was nothing short of a formalized child rape arrangement, an abhorrent agreement brokered and sanctioned by adults. Sakakawea, at a tragically young age, became a victim of continual rape and involuntary pregnancies. By the age of 14, she had conceived a child 
and her life would soon intersect with one of the most significant journeys in American history, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. In the winter of 1804 to 1805, Lewis and Clark, leading an expedition commissioned by the US government, arrived at the Hidatsa village. Little did they know that the pregnant enslaved girl in their midst would play a crucial role in their journey westward. Sakakawea's captor, her so-called husband, negotiated a fee for her services as a Shoshone translator, a fee that would be paid to him, not her. Despite her invaluable contributions, Sakakawea never received compensation for her work, or did she? Comment below what you think the answer is. The Lois and Clark expedition, officially known as the Corpse of Discovery, stands as one of the most extraordinary and daring adventures in American history and a pivotal moment for Sakakawea. Launched in 1804, this epic journey was commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson and led by two intrepid explorers, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. It aimed to traverse the uncharted western territories of the newly acquired Louisiana Purchase with the ultimate goal of reaching the Pacific Ocean. The visionary president and his ambitious plan. The origins of the expedition can be traced back to President Jefferson's visionary aspirations for westward expansion. With the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, the United States acquired a vast expanse of uncharted territory, doubling the size of the nation. Jefferson, an avid naturalist and keen explorer, saw this as an opportunity to unravel the mysteries of the West, discover new trade routes, and establish American sovereignty over these uncharted lands. Meriwether Lewis, a former army captain and personal secretary to President Jefferson, was chosen to lead the expedition. Lewis was a man of diverse talents, possessing skills in botany, zoology, and cartography, making him well suited for the scientific objectives of the journey. William Clark, a skilled frontiersman and soldier, was selected as co-leader. His extensive knowledge of wilderness survival, map making, and diplomacy made him the perfect complement to Lewis' scientific expertise. Lewis and Clark meticulously assembled a diverse team of individuals to accompany them on their journey. This group, known as the Corps of Discovery, consisted of soldiers, interpreters, boatmen, and an African-American slave named York. On May 14, 1804, the expedition embarked from St. Louis, Missouri, aboard a flotilla of vessels, including the keelboat, pirogues, and canoes. Their mission was twofold, to explore the vast unknown territory, collecting valuable scientific data about its flora and fauna, and to establish diplomatic relations with the indigenous peoples they encountered. The journey began with a treacherous ascent of the Missouri River. The cops faced numerous challenges, including powerful currents, harsh weather conditions, and the ever-present threat of hostile encounters with Native American tribes. Their progress was slow, and they often had to resort to brute force to tow their boats against the relentless flow of the river. In the winter of 1804 to 1805, the corps reached Fort Montana, located in present-day North Dakota. Here, they decided to spend the harsh winter months forging alliances with the Mandan and Hidatsa tribes. During this time, Sakakawea gave birth to her son, Jean-Baptiste Chabonneau, who would become the youngest member of the expedition. Sakakawea's presence was invaluable to the expedition. Not only did she serve as an interpreter, mediating between the corpse and various Native American tribes, but her knowledge of the land and its resources was indispensable. She was also a symbol of peace, as her presence often reassured tribes that the corpse came in friendship rather than as a threat. After arduous months of travel and countless trials, the corpse finally reached the Pacific Ocean in November 1805. They established Fort Clatsop near present-day Astoria, Oregon, where they spent the winter of 1805 to 1806. During this time, the explorers documented the natural wonders of the region, catalogued new species, and expanded their knowledge of the West. In the spring of 1806, the corps began their return journey. They retraced their steps, navigating the treacherous terrain and surviving encounters with grizzly bears, hostile tribes, and extreme weather conditions. Along the way, they split into smaller groups to explore more territory and gather additional data. As the epic Lois and Clark expedition drew to a close, Sakakawea's remarkable journey through the uncharted American West took a final, heart-wrenching turn. Despite her invaluable contributions to the success of the expedition, her story would end in tragedy, revealing the harsh realities of her life. 
After nearly two and a half years of grueling travel, exploration and discovery, the Corpse of Discovery finally reached their journey's end. They had achieved their monumental goal of reaching the Pacific Ocean, marking a historic milestone in the exploration of the American continent. The vast, uncharted territories of the West had been documented, mapped and opened to future pioneers. After the arduous trek to the Pacific Ocean, the Corpse of Discovery needed a place to hunker down for the winter. It was November 1805 that they erected Fort Clatsop, a modest fortification constructed from logs and covered with wooden shingles. The fort was situated near the mouth of the Columbian River, providing shelter from the elements and a degree of security. The winter at Fort Clatsop represented a much needed period of rest and preparation for the explorers. The harsh journey westward, filled with perilous encounters, unpredictable weather and the constant need to procure food and supplies had taken a toll on the expedition members. At Fort Clatsop, the Corps of Discovery could finally catch their breath and recover their strength. They busied themselves with the necessary tasks, such as repairing equipment, sewing clothing, and meticulously recording their observations in journals. The relative safety of the fort allowed them to tend to their physical and mental well-being. During this period of respite, a momentous event occurred within the fort's walls. Sakakawea, the young Shoshone woman who had been an indispensable member of the expedition, gave birth to her second child, a daughter. This birth, amidst the backdrop of the expedition's challenges and uncertainties, added a touch of humanity and hope to the harsh frontier landscape. Sakakawea's experience as a mother, in the midst of such adversity, underscores her incredible resilience. She cared for her infant daughter while still contributing to the expedition's efforts, including her vital roles as an interpreter and mediator with Native American tribes they encountered. The birth of Sakakawea's daughter at Fort Clatsop serves as a poignant reminder of the human experience in the face of the untamed wilderness. In the midst of their journey to conquer the unknown, the members of the expedition found solace in the simple joys of family life. As the winter of 1805 to 1806 gradually gave way to spring, the expedition prepared to continue their journey, now with the added responsibility of caring for an infant. The challenges that lay ahead were formidable, but the birth of Sakakawea's daughter at Fort Clatsop would remain a testament to the enduring spirit of those who braved the American frontier. In the spring of 1806, the Corps of Discovery began their return journey, retracing their steps and facing the same perils they had encountered on the outbound leg of their expedition. It was a challenging journey, marked by encounters with grizzly bears, treacherous river crossings, and the constant threat of hostilities with Native American tribes. As the expedition made its way back to the settled eastern territories, Sakakawea's tragic fate took shape. She was not destined to enjoy the acclaim and recognition that her contributions warranted. By the time the expedition reached the Fort Mandan area in North Dakota in 1806, Sakakawea's health had deteriorated significantly. She had endured the harsh conditions of the expedition, including extreme weather, arduous physical labor, and inadequate nutrition her body had been pushed to its limits. After the Lois and Clark expedition had returned from its monumental journey, Sakakawea found herself residing in a fur trading post located in what is now South Dakota. Her life at the trading post was a far cry from the adventurous spirit and newfound freedom she had briefly tasted during the expedition. Throughout her time at the trading post, Sakakawea yearned to be reunited with her Shoshone people, who had settled in what is modern-day Wyoming. Her heart ached for her native culture and her family, from whom she had been separated since childhood. However, her desperate pleas to return home would remain unanswered. It was during this period that Sakakawea's life took a tragic turn. She fell seriously ill, and the exact cause of her illness remains a subject of debate among historians. Some suggest that she succumbed to typhus, a disease transmitted by body lice and associated with poor hygiene and living conditions. Others propose that she may have suffered from a venereal disease, possibly contracted from her French trapper husband, Toussaint Chabonneau. As Sakakawea battled her illness, her condition grew increasingly dire. She was weakened by fever, pain, and the ravages of disease. Her strength, which had carried her through the arduous journey of the Lewis and Clark expedition, was waning. In her final days, Sakakawea's thoughts may have turned to her children, Jean-Baptiste Chabonneau, and her daughter, Lisette, 
whom she had brought into the world amid the wilderness. It is said that she longed for a reunion with her son, who had been taken in by Meriwether Lewis and received an education. With great sadness, Sakakawiya passed away at the fur trading post, her life cut short at the tender age of around 25. Her death marked the end of a journey that had seen her endure enslavement, forced labor, and unimaginable hardships. While the circumstances of her death were undeniably tragic, Sakakawiya's legacy endures as a symbol of resilience, courage, and determination. Born into the Shoshone tribe in the rugged wilderness of what is now Idaho, Sakakawea's early life was one of cultural richness and familial bonds. Her childhood was filled with the teachings of her people, the knowledge of survival in the wilderness, and the nurturing care of her family. Sakakawea's years in captivity were arduous and heart-wrenching. Forced to march hundreds of miles from Montana to North Dakota, she endured the physical and emotional trauma of enslavement. Her resilience during this period is a testament to the inner strength that would serve her well in the years to come. Sakakawea's contributions to the success of the Lois and Clark expedition, her unwavering spirit, and her capability to bridge cultures and forge connections continue to inspire people worldwide. Sakakawea's story reminds us that resilience is not just a quality, it is a testament to the human spirit's capacity to endure, adapt, and ultimately thrive in the face of adversity. Her legacy serves as a beacon of hope, a source of strength, and a symbol of the enduring power of resilience in the American narrative. So, as we learn new things about the untold pages of history, let us remember Sakakawea, a heroine, a survivor, and a beacon of hope. Her story, horrific and awe-inspiring, will forever remind us that even in the darkest of times, the human spirit can shine brilliantly, lighting the way for generations to come. Thank you for watching this video, and be sure to stay tuned for more exciting content from our channel. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest content. See you in the next video.